after you were that that the the case is is dismissed. Um, do you keep in touch with her now? Yeah. You do. We skyped yesterday. You skyped yesterday. Yeah. What is that like? I mean, what what is because nobody else has been through what you've been through except for her. It's really weird because um, when I saw her in Seattle on March, uh, I just was there for the weekend because I was in Los Angeles and uh, I found a good opportunity to fly to Seattle just for a weekend. Uh, we, at a certain point during the, we were talking about our family, our relationships, we just uh, lo uh, look at each other in the eyes and we started to laugh saying, well, we don't know really well each other, but all the people in the world are talking about us. And it's, it, you know, we, we started to laugh just for that because it's quite unbelievable. And it's also really, really weird that uh, there's a, a really, uh, a really strong boundary between us, but we, we don't know how it happened. Would you, would you ever date her again? No, no. She, she's with another boyfriend and I'm going on uh, with, with my life. Uh, we are really good friends now. Um, but no, no, there's nothing between us now. You know, in Italy, the, his, his fellow Italians, anybody who had anything to do with that house, did not go near the police station without a lawyer. On right. the day of the murder, they had lawyered up, the roommates. Only... Selecito and Knox walked in there repeatedly and kept getting called back. Never called a lawyer. As, re as a reporter, too, I mean, to me, the case is just an example of the importance of checking facts and being responsible as a journalist. Because I mean, much of the coverage was completely irresponsible and just um, in inappropriate for any journalist. Um, the, the book is Honor Bound: My Journey to Hell and Back with Amanda Knox. Um, I, I wish you well in the future. Thank you very much.